Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Fishers of Shozel to benefit from continued support by the government of Japan. Fenlusha facilitates regional discussion on the importance of women and girls in STEM. The NTRC brings consumers and services providers to the table. All that was the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. The government of Japan, through the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, is continuing support for the development of St. Lucia's fishing sector. JICA has come to the aid of the fishers of Shozel with regard to the use of its fishing port. Since construction of the Shozel fishing port close to 20 years ago by the Japanese government, fishers of the community have had difficulty getting their fishing vessels into the port due to the buildup of silt in the area. JICA has again seen it fit to assist the fishers of Shozel in finding a solution to the persistent problem and recently made a presentation to fishers as well as the Shozel Fishermen's Cooperative Society. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives Honorable Ezekiel Joseph was present at the meeting and highlighted the importance of the fishing port to the community. As a government and as a cooperative, uh, with the responsibility of your parliamentary representative, former and present, we have tried many recommendations, we have tried many solutions, and they are not working. And of course, when you look out there, you'll see the negative impact of what's happening to the environment in Swazil. We can say that we have engaged the government of JICA, or the government of Japan, through the office of JICA, and we are happy that they have reconsidered the position not to give support in solving the problems we are facing in Swazil. The minister responsible for the fisheries sector highlighted that previous measures undertaken by government to remedy the situation proved extremely costly and were not something that would be sustainable. It was for this reason that the government of Japan was re-engaged. A team of us went up to Japan last year. Your parliamentary representative was part of that team. And we had two representatives from the Swazel Fishermen's Cooperative accompanying that team with my chief fisheries officer and the technical engineer from the Ministry of Infrastructure to have a first-hand appreciation as to some of the recommendations that we can engage in St. Lucia to be able to solve the problem. I can say that based on the outcome of that visit, we are all satisfied that there are possibilities as far as a remedy. For the parliamentary representative for Shozel Saltibus, Honorable Bradley Felix, the problem is not only a financial one, but has negative impacts for the environment. Honorable Felix remains grateful for the assistance of the Japanese government at this time. Because one of the things that we must remember is the kind of assistance we would have gotten in the past from foreign govern governments and other agencies are very, very few in common. We don't get this kind of assistance like we used to get in the past. And the Japanese people are now demanding that where the government spends their money, they must be accountable, that it, it goes to good use. They know they're, they're, they're demanding that um, when they give a gift, you know, that you know, it is something that they can you know, uh, uh, um, recognize the benefit to, to, to grassroots people and, and the people that, that it's supposed to benefit. And so these funds are getting a lot more restrictive. So we are very appreciative that the, the government through the um, JICA has come back on board to give us the kind of assistance that is required to take care of this long outstanding problem that we have had. According to the Japanese officials, the proposed solutions would not see any meaningful results until the end of 2020. There will, however, be short-term measures. Students of the French Isle of Guadeloupe have completed a fact-finding mission here that has sparked new life into the agriculture sector. Anissi Antoine explains. The Ministry of Agriculture welcomed a group of 13 students from the College of Agriculture in Guadeloupe. The purpose of the visit was to expose the students to the farming systems in St. Lucia and the different agricultural techniques. 
Paul Edgar, chairperson of the Babano Constituency Council, gave insight as to some of the activities the students engaged in, including a visit at the banana farm in Roseau and a tour of the agricultural complex in Union. On Sunday, we had an island tour. Let them have a feed of St. Lucia. And on Monday was a rough day. A rough day in terms of we had a we, we visited a series of farmers. First of all, we received uh, we, we we visited the the feed mill at Viewfort. From there, we went to a farmer Leo Anthony poetry farm at Auger. Uh, from there, we went to the Simos uh, Simos farmers, and they actually witnessed. They went by the sea. They witnessed the, the process some, to some extent. And uh, on our way, we stopped at Maho, looking at the operation of DG Farms. Odile Kansel Zenon, biology and ecological teacher accompanying the students, expressed gratitude to the government of St. Lucia for the opportunity and noted that the group has learned a lot. We have two, uh, two programs, a program on development and another one on animal production. So we saw things about, about um, chickens and uh, about banana, which are cultures, production, we, we, we do uh, too in Guadeloupe. So we want to compare, we want to see if there, there is another thing to, to do here, or the same thing, in order to um, to make our students have a see on all the world and particularly on the Carib. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, expressed hope for the continued exchanges between Guadeloupe and St. Lucia. The chairman um, of council has said that the group has sorted Guadeloupe pour venir cette ici et puis I mean nous en bas pour nous ni responsabilité à pour pour host groupes ça moi dit I'm on board because I remember myself growing up you know as a student um, going on these exchange visits how I I learned a lot going to the Caribbean countries interacting with people playing the sports you know playing the football playing the cricket so I felt it was a good initiative and I'm hoping that you during the time that you were here, that you interacted and you enjoyed St. Lucia. The program commenced on Saturday the 18th of January and culminated on Saturday the 25th of January 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine Quartin. St. Lucia is this week hosting the 2020 Caribbean Regional STEAM and Innovation Symposium, sponsored by Microsoft and the World Bank. The symposium is being facilitated by the Innovation Division of the Ministry of Education in collaboration with the Aspire Artemis Foundation. It is geared towards increasing female representation and interest in science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Janelle Norville has the details. The symposium, which targets women and girls, was born out of a need to get girls and women more involved and take greater leadership in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Today, Founder of Aspire Artemis Foundation, Hermina Johnny, indicated that it is expected to see a number of young women and girls from St. Lucia and the Caribbean contributing to dialogues that will shape their future, families, and the world. Johnny added that girls and women should be represented across the board. It is incredibly important that we engage and rebuke false narratives as a first step in breaking the glass ceiling in STEM-related fields. Women and girls need to be reminded that all co career options are available to them. Beyond this, we need to be mindful that credible studies from institutions such as the Harvard Business Review have cited diverse teams as more likely to produce diverse ideas. Diversity and inclusion is very important in our societies today. How do we expect young women and girls 
to feel that they are represented in fields that are supposed to have them in mind if they do not see themselves physically represented in the rooms, in the arenas that have the most impact. The symposium, which is the foundation's first event in the Caribbean, aims to achieve organizational goals, which include contributing to long-term development, changing lives for youth development, providing opportunity and fostering strong communities for youth engagement and empowerment, and engaging cultures by encouraging youth to broaden their perspectives, foster acceptance, and work together to find innovation to complex problems that affect their lives and communities. Microsoft's Director of Partner Technology, Hasha Burner, indicated that being in the age of a digital revolution, it is important to create more digital citizens interested in STEAM and STEM. I feel like we are at the point where we are trying to solve a lot of difficult problems, right? We are trying to solve problems like hunger, safety, um, you know, poverty, the, the earth, for that matter, right? I mean, we are in a crisis, like global warming is real. Um, and we're trying to solve a lot of different problems. And right now, you know, the, the number of girls and women in the teams that are trying to solve these problems is not proportionally represented, right? So I think what we really need to do is, the problems are being solved, but the problems are being solved only by primarily by, not only by, but primarily by only one gender. So when we are trying to solve the problems for the entire population, which represents both the genders, don't we have a, you know, a responsibility to make sure that we bring both the genders to the table? So our job is to start creating that pipeline and encouraging uh, both genders to be able to you know, um, contribute to this problem solving. The symposium, which is designed to inspire and encourage women to get involved in roles that will shape future technologies, is being sponsored primarily by Microsoft and the World Bank. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Department of the Public Service will be embarking on a number of initiatives aimed at enhancing security and improving the aesthetics of the Graham Louise Administrative Building compound. More in this report by Julita Peter. Phase one of the project entails the installation of a fence around the perimeter of the ground. The project got underway on Monday, February 3rd. Brian Samuel is a director of security at the Graham Weezy Administrative Building. The objective of the project is to enhance security and safety at the Graham Weezy Administrative Building. Over the years, we've had several incidents of theft and vandalism. The fencing is expected to help curb those incidents. The Department of Public Service is implementing the project with a customer-friendly mindset. Therefore, we will ensure that the fencing does not alienate members of the public from accessing services provided at the building. Architectural Assistant at the Department of the Public Service, Kirk John, explains what the scope of the project will entail. The project entails erecting approximately 340 feet of fencing along the boundary of the Graham Louise building more specifically the boundary facing the Castries car park, the boundary facing the Castries harbour and the boundary between the Herildin Rock building. The assembly is basically hot dip galvanized wire with rectangular hollow sections with a powder coated finish. Uh, we believe that this would strike the best balance between being resilient to the sea blast given the proximity of the building and upkeeping the aesthetics of the compound. This project is part of a larger program of projects which will be undertaken by the Department of Public Service to enhance public safety and security. The project is expected to be undertaken within 21 days. All is being done to ensure that there is minimal interruption with regard to access and parking during the construction period. The Department of the Public Service solicits the cooperation and understanding of the general public. From the Communication Unit of the Department of the Public Service, Julita Peter reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. We'll be back in a moment. The Ministry of Tourism is working alongside the Department of Statistics to develop St. Lucia's Tourism Satellite Account, TSA. The Tourism Satellite Account is an internationally established method of measuring the direct contributions of tourism to our national economy. 
This will help the government in developing effective policy for the industry. If you are in the business of tourism, the ministry needs your help in collecting critical data necessary for this tourism satellite account. Let's all help to develop and improve our economy. All tourism-related establishments are asked to contact the ministry at 468-5393 before Friday, the 28th of February, for further information specific to their business. Welcome back. Users of telecommunications services were given an opportunity to interact with service providers, the regulators and consumer rights advocates during a town hall meeting organized by the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, the NTRC. The objective of the town hall was to ensure that consumers receive the best quality service through a process of engagement and empowerment. Please allow me to take the opportunity to welcome you all here to our first meet, greet and speak town hall meeting. Residents of Groselay and Babano were the beneficiaries of the first consumer engagement activity facilitated by the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission for 2020. What we have discovered is that many times consumers, sometimes they have issues, but they are not necessarily aware of how to address those issues. I am Josephine Alcid Bafelmi of Ridgery, and I have a lot to say tonight. Ready to respond directly to consumer complaints and comments were representatives of the main telecom service providers in St. Lucia, Digicel, and Flow. Ultimately, 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 none of us want angry customers. None of us want dissatisfied customers. But we don't get enough feedback for us to make informed decisions. So. Part of this for us from our side to you is please help us so we can help you. Consumer rights agencies, governmental and non-government, were also invited to address the audience. Tonight, I am here basically to tell you about your rights as consumers. Today we have a solution and we are on the cusp of a revolution. It's called the Consumer Protection Act. The NTRC's Meet, Greet and Speak Grosley Town Hall gave the audience multiple opportunities to engage the decision makers at Flow, Digicel and the consumer rights agencies. Do you, do you laugh at us sometimes when you, give, when you offer us your bundling packages? If you want one service and they say you, can, you can't have one service, you have to have four at once, that now is illegal. You cannot do that. You can choose what you want to have. I have internet, which drops most of the time. Um, I have cable, which I only really watch one channel. Every Monday, and recently on a Tuesday, my internet speed drops by half. Um, there was very good advocacy on the, on the customer side, which is what we really wanted to do. Provide information for customers, for consumers, so that they know what their options are. We were keen to understand from our perspective and from our consumers' perspective how we can improve our service. So we welcome that initiative and tonight was a success. Uh, it, was, it was useful and I think that it should be something that probably is done maybe once a quarter or twice a year. The NTRC intends to take its meet, greet and speak town hall meetings throughout the island with the hope that St. Lucians will be empowered and more aware of their rights as consumers and that service providers will be better informed of the experiences and expectations of their customers. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next is Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoeur. St. Lucia! Are, are you ready for the National Independence Parade? Celebrate our independence in a grand way this February 22nd, starting at the SAB in VG. Come experience a true St. Lucian spectacle with amazing floats, traditional dancers, musicians, and more. Led by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and include communities, ministries, and business houses. Join in the excitement and let's Show the best of St. Lucia. Now is the time. Let's do this together. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame Department, qui n'est pas responsable de l'information, 
un gouvernement sur le CGIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale, pays à NTN, qui a cette nouvelle à Coyol, pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Les cultivateurs, j'ai trouvé une bonne occasion pour vendre pour du primaire. Ça, c'est parce que la mission technique de Taïwan, en collaboration avec le ministère de l'Agriculture, a organisé la place de manger pour ces cultivateurs à la vallée Mabouya. L'objectif, principalement, c'était pour encourager plus la vente pour ça y a produit. L'initiatif là, qu'à suivre effort pour renforcer y a des de production qui est plus effective et pour aussi renforcer effort de distribution de vestibulage et le régime à bas projet qui a supporté cette dernière pour en période de trois années. Coordinateur projet ça là, Aglen Yorovic, explique que malgré ces cultivateurs habitués à servir la place traditionnelle comme la place Castrui, le ministère a créé aussi et important pour explorer l'autre possibilité pour établir la place qui est plus près. Il y a aussi c'est une façon pour encourager les résidents comme ils ont pour servir plus ça qui a produit à Wetla. Ça, c'est à Wetla même. Dimon exhibition, la place Sala en Valais Mabouya, la tenue 3 en ces régimes Sala qui a opéré un bas projet de diversification, aussi l'autre produit qu'on sur au miel avec des vins locales. Yon représentatif Mission Taiwan note que ça c'était 6e la place les cultivateurs j'ai participé déjà et à vrai qui attention c'est pour essayer de réduire à souci quantité les légumes qui s'est réussi à acheter l'autre pays et pour continuer travail pour improver à sa production particulièrement c'est cette d'un oui et pour aussi assister les cultivateurs pour habituer et puis technologie nouveau yon représentatif pour ces cultivateurs c'est François Bispat parler de dégoût satisfaction qui ont trouvé un initiative ça là il a ajouté qui li et puis les autres cultivateurs et les femmes très appréciable pour y trouver l'occasion pour participer dans la place ça là un autre cultivateur qui a quoi de marche là qui a porté en pile satisfaction et plus important toujours selon Castor Cox peuple là qui a acheté ces produits Projet de diversification, c'est dans le salat, particulièrement le fritage avec le régime, commencé l'année passée et le bout en l'année 2021. Compagnie de services de l'eau en cette ici, Wasco, j'ai marché, j'ai marché officiellement placement pour bâtir établissement Nefli en face à ce pays. Ménagement Wasco déclare que Gouan stricté ça là en vieux fort, pas qu'il seulement pour éprouver le travail avec les travailleurs, mais aussi qu'il facilite un service qui va porter plus d'éprouvement pour les résidents. Vous avez établi un bureau en vieux fort en mois de décembre l'année 2010 pour un service pour les résidents à face à la sous pays là, sorti d'un pour Miko. Mais plus tard après, vous avez découvert que l'établissement qui s'était en bas agrément de l'OE, pas capable pour faciliter effectivement des goûts des man qui servent cela et qui commandent. Particulièrement à sur les travailleurs, le management et les pratiques. Conseiller, gouvernement, embrasser conseil les directeurs et décider pour bâtir une facilité nouveau qui est capable de pou supporter à total ce développement qui a déjà proposé pour faire ça sur le pays. Chairman pour Asco, Francis Dembo, déclare que ça a porté grand significance qui a accompli pour l'établissement de ça. Selon Dembo, il y a un peu de temps à présent qui a été considéré pour bâtir le bureau en vieux fort, pour avoir une place qui s'est même, pour délivrer un service à des hauts degrés pour les clients qui a augmenté et aussi pour les travailleurs. Ça n'est assez pour les travailleurs, ça n'est assez laid et plus confortable pour opérer. Dembo, vous remarquez que par conséquence, il a approché le ministre de la Kine responsabilité pour Wasco, ça c'est Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, et aussi le premier ministre Honorable Alan Chosney, pour assister, trouver un morceau de terrain qui est acceptable pour bâtir le bureau de la Dembo dit que le cabinet n'a pas pété la cap et vite approuvé l'appel pour faire un morceau de terrain qui est plus qu'un acteur. Alors, 
parce que quand vous remerciez autant les ministres du gouvernement pour faire une initiative sur la attention si tellement vite avec le ministre, le ministre des Affaires agricultures et les ressources naturelles, l'honorable Ezekiel Joseph, déclare qu'il est plaît pour ces membres du groupe qui fait commitment à la. C'est une année et demie passée, côté IT pour mettre qui lit et puis gouvernement. Et le ménagement a ce qu'on a improuvé à ce facilité pour ce pays. Il est plein pour qu'on ait un commitment à l'accompli. Le meilleur fort, c'est que l'établissement a apporté moins de choses pour les résidents à ce pays. Il y a une facilité à ce qu'on bâti devant la ville de Vieux-Fort, comme quand on a ville de Vieux-Fort. Supposé fini en 12 mois et qu'on a coûté 7,5 millions de dollars. La banque de cette ici a aidé pour financer le projet de à ce programme aujourd'hui, nous avons adressé le premier ministre Alan Chasne fait à ce changement de climat en adresse pour l'année 2020. Le premier ministre Honorable Alan Chasne a conseillé cette liste pour l'année 2020 pour prendre plus de précautions et respecter l'environnement du pays et pour ne plus de croyance en la croyance naturelle. Le premier ministre Chasne fait référence principalement pour manier moun ka depose zo de vay ti vay ki ka bouche kanal et l'autre côté moun ka servi pou marché premier ministre la di ki gouvernement j'a fait un grand effort pour contrôler et pour réduire petit à petit service constat reform pour ka continuer déboucher kanal mais tout ça ka il lave la main sou ri a te si les citoyens pas accepter responsabilité et mettre en bout ces vieilles habitudes là ka sali bel te cette ci mais le premier ministre Chasne promet quand même pour continuer pour chercher des manœuvres nouveaux et des technologies pour aider à déposer des pays à plus de À ce autre programme, nous allons examiner le premier ministre là à son développement facilité sport. Et c'est comme ça nous allons avoir une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour jeter plus encore. Si vous conservez la vie, vous allez poser une nouvelle à Créole. À présent, je vous remercie pour cette nouvelle. Merci au Pil Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy, hazy and breezy, becoming cloudy at times with some scattered showers. The Atlantic high pressure system will continue to generate moderate to brisk easterly winds and rough seas around the eastern Caribbean region for the next couple of days. Weak unstable conditions in the atmosphere over the region will cause some scattered showers to develop over the islands during the next 24 hours. The seas locally rough with waves and northerly to northeasterly swells 6 to 9 feet or 1.8 to 2.7 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise extreme caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Wednesday at 6.28 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the Selenusha Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.